All right, so before we can head out fishing, I need to replace that anchor I lost yesterday out in Shark Channel. Uh, just a bit of warning there, and that gives it a good example about how much water flow is in those cuts. Uh, it was a little bit magnified because we're just coming off of the full moon, which impacts the water volume, but still, I would compare those channel cuts in the Keys is equivalent to any big river system in the mainland. I, I fished a lot of rivers, and uh, I used the same exact anchor system because of that. This transitioned over very well for the channels, as well as for deep uh, anchoring up on the reef and outside the reef. If you're just uh, anchoring on the flats or you're out in the bays or something like that where it's more lake-like conditions and you're not getting really impacted by wind and uh, current, then it's not such a necessity. But if you're playing with the, the channel fishing, you definitely need a better anchor system than just some basic drop anchor. Okay. The other important thing is I talk a lot about f during tarpon fishing how my quick release system is mandatory, being able to flick of a finger and get off anchor and have that start chasing after that tarpon. Probably even more important and impactful is the safety side of it. If even I, my kayak setup, which is as stable as it is with that outrigger and that weighted motor in the center of it, in that current like it was, if I would have got sideways with my anchor line tied off in the middle, okay, it would have sucked that kayak under just like that and it would have been over. Everything would have got pulled over and I would have been done. So you just gotta be very careful about anything to do with these channels and amount of water flow. You have to, have to, have to have a quick release, even just for the safety part of it, because you can't get tied up. If you get sideways, there's no way that you can pull hard enough to gain enough slack line to untie yourself. And when you pull, you end up teetering your kayak. And if the current's hard enough and you're pulling hard enough, you'll very quickly flip yourself because that water will hit that edge and just drop you under. So just be very careful about that part. But anyways, let's build this thing real quick and I'll show you my system and then we'll go out and do some fishing. Since my anchor line actually broke, I only lost the lower part, which was the main anchor system. So I'm, that's what I replaced today. Fortunately, they're fairly inexpensive and I was able to go down to my local West Marine and Hope and Depot to uh, pick up this stuff. So the anchor that I specifically use for my channel and reef fishing is this Lumar. It's a 2.2 pound or one kilogram claw style. Um, I can't remember if they call these a Danforth as well might be the name, but you can kind of say this shape is, is the type. The, the main important thing, regardless of the anchor that you choose, is that it needs to be quick release. And I'll show you how it works on this one, but even other styles like my uh, four prong hook anchor has the same release system. So as long as it has a quick release, it's fine. Uh, I have about uh, three feet of chain and what that's going to do is to weight the front end so it keeps that nose down so that it'll help the uh, teeth dig into the ground and then the slow clevis to uh, attach the chain to the anchor. So let's set this up. Okay, so all we need to do on this part is to attach the chain to the anchor. We're going to use it by doing it with this shackle that has just an unscrewed pin. I'm going to take one end of the chain, run it through the shackle, and then we're going to attach the shackle to the anchor. Now normally if you look at an anchor you would think it would go to this point and that is the pivot point correctly but we actually have a quick release so the main uh, chain main tie on point is actually in this back corner so we just need to insert that pin through that anchor and tighten it down And then I'll wrench this down to make it a little bit tighter so it doesn't come off. And now that anchor is tied up. All right, to finish the assembly, that requires a real basic light duty zip tie. I just get these for a 60 pack for a dollar at the dollar store. Uh, if you're doing it in a boat, you'll probably need a little bit of a heavier uh, zip tie and just gotta kind of play with it till you find out what works. Or you can even use fishing line, different weights of fishing line. Basically, this is the breakaway, so you don't want to use like wire or something heavy duty. You want it to be strong enough to hold it, but yet weak enough that when you pull on it and yank on it, it'll snap and release. So all we're going to do now is we just run the anchor line along the chain, find the correct link there, and then we're going to run a zip tie through it. 
and zip it up. Oops. All right, there we go. So imagine that this is the sea bottom, okay? And we're just looking at a side view. So when we drop that anchor down, it's gonna land on the bottom, okay? And then what this anchor line is going to do, because it's weighted, it's going to pull that front of the anchor down to the sea bottom as well. And that's specifically what the weight does. Now, if you don't have any weight, what happens with if you just use rope is that line may not be enough to drop that front end. Then when your anchor is like this, the nose is not angled to dig into the ground and it'll slide and it won't hook up. Okay. So that's the importance of the weighted chain on it. So that's locked up there. This will start digging into the ground and you're set. Now the break off anchor happens is that if there was some sort of uh, obstruction down there that this anchor gets stuck underneath, okay? So it's wedged in there and by you pulling, it won't come free, okay? No matter how hard you pull, that obstruction's got it wedged underneath there and it's just not gonna come out. So what happens here is you pull, 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 won't free itself. Then what you can do is give it a very hearty yank. Okay, so it's there. You finally just say, screw this, I need my anchor back. You yank very hard, it snaps that uh, zip tie off and then your leverage point becomes this pin section and then you start pulling it out this way, back way off of that obstruction. So that's what the quick release anchor does and it'll salvage a lot of anchors and that's also why it's so important. Because these tines or your hooks and your claw anchors will get stuck under rocks, get stuck under trees, roots, obstructions, and then by pulling forward it's just impossible. You're not gonna be able to get it out. But with this breakaway, since now you're pulling from the back, you're pulling away from the obstruction and that frees you up. So that's kind of how that works. All right, so there's the anchor system, well, at least the bottom half of it. I'll put a link in the description on the full video I made in regards to this anchor system. It's called a QRAS, QRAS, or Quick Release Anchor System. I also include in that video how to physically use it on the water. Uh, there's multiple ways to set it up while you're setting it out, as well as the correct procedure for actually bringing up your anchor to help prevent being getting stuck. Uh, the big takeaway, the safety side of it, I can't emphasize when you start playing with anchors and kayaks. All right, um, highly suggest any anchor system that you decide with is fine. Just make sure that it's quick release, that it has one flip and your release. Uh, no two hands, no one minute of unbuckling and stuff. It needs to be flick and you're away from that anchor line. There's just too many times where there's gonna be current, there's gonna be wind, there's gonna be sloppy wake, where you're gonna be just too unstabilized while you're attached to that anchor line and you need to separate yourself, otherwise it's gonna flip you over. The other highly recommended suggestion is run scenarios while you're on the water, all right? If this happens, I need to reach over here and be done with it. If this happens, I reach over here, here's my knife that I can cut it and be free from it. If I'm gonna get flipped over, I wanna land on which side of the kayak, up current, down current, and be able to grab that kayak and hold on to it so I don't get swept away, etc. Just go through those scenarios so you're not caught totally off guard. And it might help you decide which is the better uh, anchor system when you start thinking about what can actually happen. So anyways, let's go fishing. Hey everybody. So we are on another test run. What I'm looking for is another quick place where I could run and grab a tarpon. So it's 545 now. Uh, I'm going to be hitting the Gulf side. And then I'm going to be experimenting with a bait spot for pinfish, which I don't have. As well as check to make sure that the, the mullet are showing up in my mullet spots out on, the, out on that side. And then, uh, yeah, just see if I could uh, come up with a... Uh, nice pattern where I could leave Key West about 6, get out there, catch a tarpon, and then be home by 10. So that's the plan for today. Alright, I was able to pick up an, about a half dozen nice uh, pinfish there. 
I've got my hoagie all rigged up and then I'm just gonna do a slow drift across this flats here and then once I get out a bit then I'll probably drop anchor and just set up and keep an eye out for any movement and then if I see something I'm actually gonna use my pedals and work my way over and uh, throw the hoagie at them okay I've got a pinfish on the bobber pinfish are a bottom dweller so you got to have a bobber to keep them off the bottom for this one I've got a pinfish on a bobber pinfish are a bottom dweller so you got to have a bobber to keep them from just running to the bottom and snagging you up and this is about six or seven feet maybe a little bit deeper over there so not super deep at the moment oh and we're just gonna put that out there we've still got another half an hour 45 minutes to prime time and then I'm gonna keep an eye out for anything rolling and I've got my hoagie to throw at them so we are ready sun has set now into my normal prime time I just gotta watch out for those crab buoys over there and I'm just gonna slow troll around <laughs> 